Hi guys, so now we are going to talk about strategy and we will basically uh, start our formalization with the strategies. So <clears throat> uh, if you like, you can consider the example I gave you be between uh, the strategic interaction between Mr. Brown and Mr. Green, or you may want to think of a more complicated game like chess, for example. Chess is also an extensive form game, right? Uh, the players, there are two players, and then the moves, the actions, and then, you know, the rules, like, you know, uh, what a player can do, how he can play or she can play after, you know, certain uh, moves, etc., are clear. And then the outcomes are clear. You either win or sort of uh, the outcome can be either, you know, one guy win, the other loses, or there's a tie. All right, and so the preferences, well, as you wish, everybody probably prefers to win, and then tie is sort of the second best, and losing is the third best, so there are basically three outcomes. And then what is the information? Well, everything uh, is, is perfectly observable, right? Each player can observe each of the previous actions by his opponent. Um, so if you think of this ex uh, 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 sort of game, the chess game, the actions and the strategies are not exactly the same, right? I mean, for example, moving, uh, just, just making one move at some t period of the game or at some time of the game is not a strategy. A strategy is, in this game, from the beginning to the end, uh, how to play under every possible circumstances that may uh, or may not occur, all right? So, Clearly, it's, it's very hard to come up with a strategy in a game like chess, uh, but well, that, that's what makes a, a sort of an experienced chess player versus inexperienced chess player, right? In an experienced chess player, for example, your move will probably lead to, uh, you know, a several steps of, uh, of moves for your opponent if he or she is an experienced player. But uh, if you're not an experienced player, you may basically just uh, consider a, a one step ahead only. So once again, so the strategy is therefore, in any uh, extensive form game, is uh, formally, a bit more formally, is a complete contingent plan for a player in the game. All right? So let me repeat. A strategy is a complete contingent plan for a player in the game. What do we mean by complete contingent plan or just contingent plan, it basically tells me the following. A strategy should specify what a player is going to do or how he is going to play in every possible information set or decision note he or she has. All right, so let me say it uh, sort of a bit more formally. A strategy must specify each action player I will, should, must, uh, I mean, no, I, whatever, player I will take at each decision node or info set, information set, she or he has. All right? So this is what we mean by a complete contingent plan. Uh, so this is a contingent plan. So some of these decision nodes will maybe not ever uh, reached, uh, but it should be complete uh, in the sense that uh, you have to specify an action at every possible uh, scenario you may at. All right? So this is what strategy is. It's not... Uh, a lot of students confuse with strategy and path of play, all right? It's not what you will do uh, given your opponent uh, uh, does a sequence of moves. It is what you will do given that whatever your opponent, whatever sequence of moves your opponent may have. All right, so it's it's so the strategy is much more comp, uh, sort of complex animal than sort of uh, I'm gonna play this action and that action. It's like yeah, but when, under what circumstances? All right, so you have to specify all these. Okay, so how do we? I mean, without looking or giving an example, how do we? So we need a set of uh, uh, notations. 
which we will keep using again and again in this course. So, I am sorry. Uh, let me start with set of players. So we usually denote it by n, all right? So it's not the set of natural numbers, it's n, the set of players. And remember, we need at least two members in the set. So therefore, the number of elements in the set n has to be at least uh, greater than or equal to two. And the players are gonna be like i, j, all right? Player i, player j, which are element in n, all right? So I'm gonna call them, not Mr. Green, Mr. Brown, I'm gonna call them player one, two, three, four, etc., or player i, j, very well. So S sub i is basically strategy set, or sometimes, you know, some textbooks call it space, strategy space of player i, obviously in game, sorry, in a specific game, right? You fix the game, all right? And then in this game, there are, sorry, a set of strategies. If you change the game, which means completely different set of rules, set of completely different set of actions, completely set of players maybe, and so the set of strategies will be also different. So fixing the game, SI is the strategy sets or strategy space of a player I in this game. We usually denote, and so this is an S set. There might be finitely many or infinitely many elements in this set, okay? Uh, maybe finite or infinite, depends. Uh, infinite. And we will have examples for both. Most of our examples initially will be finite because it's simpler to work with finite set of uh, strategies. And then we're gonna look at examples where the set of strategies are infinite. Um, usually we denote the strategy an element and uh, let me call it an element uh, in SI is usually denoted by small si, all right? Or sometimes I just drop i and just call it s. If you wanna say, you know, two different strategy, how do we denote this, right? We don't use A, B, C, D. We, we denote it by C, I prime, C, I double prime, C, I triple prime if we need, okay? Um, so if, if we need another notation, sometimes maybe T, I, but you know, we usually go with S, right? Very good. We usually put I, in order to denote that it is the strategy of the player, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes we may ignore the subscript i, but not much, all right. Well, what about uh, strategy profile? Another piece of notation we need to know. Well, strategy profile is actually a vector of strategies, all right? It's a vector of strategies. Uh, in fact, it's a mathematical uh, uh, um, an object. So if each player has a strategy set S sub i, then that means this is the first player's strategy, second player's strategy space. What I'm doing is cross product. Once again, if you don't know what cross product is or Cartesian product is, please go and check the math reviews. S, N. So let's suppose, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the number of N is equal to small n, all right? So there are N many players, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the Cartesian product of each players. And so this, I'm gonna denote it capital S without any subscript. So when you see uh, no sub subscript, it usually, all right, obviously, depending on the context, it may mean something else, but it usually means a strategy profile, right? An element in this capital S is this vector with no subscript, and we usually write it as S1, S2, Sn, okay? So it is an element of this S. So it's a strategy profile. It basically tells me what strategy each player will play or will choose, all right? Very well. Um, what else? 
Well, here is one piece of notation. Uh, it, it is important that sometimes I would like to take one player out of the strategy profile. All right. So sometimes I denote S as S I S minus I. Okay. So that means S I the 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 strategy of the eighth player. Strategy of the eighth player. What about this? Well, this is another profile, all right? It's a vector, but it's a vector where a player I is excluded. And it basically represents strategy of all other players, other players, but I, all right? So everybody other than I, their strategy is sort of expressed by S, S, uh, sub, uh, uh, S sub minus I, all right? So S sub minus I is basically this set. So capital S uh, sub minus I is S1 cross S2 cross all the way to, uh, I'm sorry, let me write it somewhere here. Um, so S minus I is again a vector of strategies, as I said. It's a cross product of S1 all the way to S uh, minus, uh, I'm sorry, S I minus one cross product. I am skipping ith player's strategy. So the next player is I plus one and all the way to Sn. So you probably see why I am uh, numbering the players, all right? So the notation becomes easier. All right, so player one, so instead of referring player Brown, Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown, whatever, whatever, uh, just, you know, just number them. And so the notations and everything is, is getting easier. So S minus I is again a cross product of, right, N minus one uh, uh, strategy set, strategy set. This one, however, uh, n a uh, cross product of n strategy sets. So that's the difference. I basically exclude the ith player's strategy space and take the cross product of everybody else. So that gives me s sub minus i, the capital S sub minus i. So an element of it is small s sub minus i is an element of capital S minus i. All right. So whenever you see minus i, sub minus i, it means the strategy profile uh, of uh, all the other players except uh, player i. All right. So if I have something like s minus j, that means all the other players' strategy except player j. All right. So s minus one, for example, uh, you know the strategies of the other players except player one, and so on. Okay. So the, the, the next object that I would like to talk about is the payoff function, right? Remember, we, we talked about preferences over outcomes. Yes. So preferences over outcomes can actually be represented by a utility function. So this is what we're going to assume. So we're going to assume that preferences over outcomes are complete transitive and reflexive binary relation and so they can be represented by a utility function etc etc and so uh, I'm going to denote it by u sub i which is the utility or the payoff in game theory we don't call it utility we call it payoff um, why is that so well because we would like to remember in the consumer theory, we had utility, but the utility depends only on your choice. You know, how much uh, good one, good two, etc. you consume. Here, however, your utility depends in this context of strategic interaction. Your utility depends not only on your choices, actions, but also on the other's choices or actions. So therefore, we just wanted to use a different lingo to distinguish that we are actually dealing with a strategic environment rather than a single person decision problem. For that reason, we call the utility functions in game theory as payoff functions. All right. Um, okay. So the utility, I'm sorry, but I, I keep uh, sort of using utility payoff uh, back and forth. That's a confusion. I'm sorry, because I'm teaching 
uh, you know, um, game theory and micro theory at the same uh, time. So the payoff function is in fact a function which maps the strategy profiles into a real numbers. Okay, positive, negative, I don't know, I don't care. So once again, a payoff function for player i maps every strategy profile to a real number. All right, so therefore, as a player i, my utility will depend on my opponent one's actions, strategy, I'm sorry, second player's strategy, my own strategy as well, right? It's somewhere here, and all the way to the end player's strategy. So that's some real number. And my payoff gives a real number value for every strategy profile. Okay, so you got the picture. Once again, this is how we capture the idea of strategic interaction. My choice, my strategy, influences my payoff. But it's not enough. Your choices, your strategies also influence my well-being. So therefore, when you make a choice, you should know that you will be affecting my well-being. And therefore, as a reaction to that, I am going to choose my strategy so that I either compensate the losses you caused to me or, you see what I mean, I react to your choices. And that reaction basically comes from the utility function, obviously. Right? Okay, very well. Um, yep, basically uh, that's all for the strategies. And the next episode, I'm going to talk about uh, a, a normal form or the strategic form representation of a game.